everyone's life is filled with highs and lows. Gary's achievements were great. His lows, rock bottom. There's no question this man made some bad decisions in his life. Now it seems he may have made one that cost him his life. On a nice summer day in this nice neighborhood, Gary walked off his back deck and began pacing his driveway, cell phone to his ear. It was something everyone around him was accustomed to. Just back and forth on the cell phone every day. The neighbor's nanny across the street pulled up for her 3 o'clock shift. And I parked my car there and he was outside and he was pacing the driveway on the phone. That's what he normally does. And I came inside, I sat at the table. And a single gunshot rang out. When you heard the shot, where did it come from? From the back of the house. Gary was dead. This was not a random crime. It appeared to be a hit. An execution in quiet Royal Oak is anything but routine. Gary's life was anything but routine. But routine seemed to play a big part in his death. His neighbors knew him as Gary Harmon. Knew he had some kind of a sign company and worked out of his home. Gary Harmon had a Facebook account with 68 friends. He had a girlfriend. Other than that, his neighbors say they didn't know much about Gary Harmon. It turns out they didn't even know his real name. Gary, are you a crook? Do you run a crooked business? Gary Harmon was really Gary Harmon Lupula. Back in 1999, I exposed him for cheating his clients at Capri Leasing, the auto brokerage he ran at the time. Doctoring titles and changing odometers was his game. But even then, I knew Gary Lupiloff wasn't the average guy I put in the Hall of Shame. Gary Lupiloff was a brilliant, charming guy. In the 80s, he'd been an attorney, but was disbarred for stealing from his clients. Soon afterwards, he built up a successful business as an auto broker. Gary liked to mingle with high-powered clients and brag about it. Like when he contacted Fox 2 in the mid-90s for publicity. He was selling Cato Kalin's car. Cato and OJ were in this car fairly recently. But trouble followed Gary again. This time he was charged in federal court with fraud. The feds say Gary stole a quarter of a million dollars. Shortly after my story aired, Gary Lupiloff was sent to federal prison. And when he got out, Gary Harmon was born. Lupiloff dropped his last name, dyed his hair, and started a sign business with these electronic billboard trucks. If you've been to the Woodward Dream Cruise, the Tigers opening day, or pretty much any other special event around town, you've probably seen one of Gary's high-tech screens roll by. Even though it seems he was trying to forget his past, he still loved the spotlight. Here's Gary starring in a commercial. Come on, baby, let's go to Lover's Lane. Okay. Gary may have changed his business, changed his name, but some things never change. I still got the occasional call from Gary's new business associates telling me he'd done them wrong. And they must have told Gary they were narking him out because I'd soon get a call from Gary Lupiloff. He'd tell me everything was okay. He was always upbeat, always charming. Said he was getting it together. But in 2007, Gary Harmon Lupiloff filed for bankruptcy. He owed a lot of people a lot of money. He moved out of his office and started running his sign business from his home, routinely walking up and down his driveway, doing business on the cell phone. And when Gary worked on the phone, he was in a zone. I don't even know if he's ever like looked up to acknowledge other people being around because he's never, he's never said anything. Those around him say he didn't never even notice no, them. Never know, hi, how are you, nothing. He was, um... He wasn't a very friendly person from what I've seen. Gary was the perfect target for someone who wanted him dead. Whoever planned this had to have been casing the neighborhood because they seemed to know perfectly the routine of the people that lived around Gary Lupiloff. The lady who lives next door works in her yard and has dogs, but every day she left around two to pick up her daughter from summer camp. That's when the dogs are locked up in the house. The woman in this house, afternoon doctor visits. Directly across the street, getting ready for the nanny to take care of the kids. This house, the care worker bathes elderly clients from two to three. And behind Gary's house, a school, a deserted school. It's summer and the campus is quiet. And even if there were someone nearby, they wouldn't see anyone lurking in these shadows, even at 2.30 in the afternoon. Low hanging branches completely obscure the view from the street. This is the area where the sniper is believed to have stood. He had a clear shot from right here. And on Tuesday afternoon, July 13th, 2010, 
As was his routine, Gary Lupiloff was in his driveway on the phone. The nanny arriving at work across the street was the last to see him alive. The last, that is, except for the person taking aim. My cameraman is standing where Gary Lupiloff was shot. I'm standing where most likely the shooter was standing. As you can see, the person with the gun had a good hiding spot. Somebody had to have watched me walk in the door if it happened right after I walked in. The deadly marksman fired just one shot. The bullet hit Gary in the back and went clean through his body, presumably winding up in a large mulch pile across the street. Within minutes, police arrived, but the killer was gone. Days later, the mulch is being cleaned up. The crime scene cape is down. This quiet neighborhood is back to its routine, all except for the man who was ordinarily seen pacing his driveway. Gary, a man who lived a life that was anything but ordinary. A person on a bicycle was seen leaving the school area behind Lupiloff's house at the time of the shooting. Although police also say they're looking for a black SUV type vehicle. If you have any tips, please call the Royal Oak Police.